Hey guys, excuse the weird hair, but welcome to this vlog. I'm going to the AWP 2018 Writers Conference. This is going to be my very first Writers Conference. I'm a little nervous, but I'm also just really excited because it's been a while since I've nerded out around other writers. So I'm going to take you through the next few days and you're going to see what it's like to be a freelance writer going to one of these conferences for the first time. Get ready. Okay, so I just got to the Tampa Convention Center and I got my little badge and my very first writer's conference. Um, there's gonna be a lot of panels, a lot of discussions, a lot of readings. I know I'm trying to center um, seeing people of color, seeing discussions about um, social justice and writing, seeing discussions about prison writing, things like that. So I'm just gonna kinda take you through my day, give you my thoughts, my very first writer's conference, low key, high key, I'm trying to see how white this space is and I know there's an African-American caucus that I really want to go to but it's a beautiful day outside I might try and get some food but day one and I got this little tote bag so Hold on, let me okay do you want to start well. yeah here we go my name is Marianne Thomas, and I'm a travel writer. I write about bike touring. I recently biked across India um, in 2017, over four months, and I'm writing about what it's like to visit a home you know and don't know. I'm a writer from the Bay Area, Oakland. So right now I am shopping for my YA fantasy novel about Caribbean American twins discovering their goddesses. And I'm finishing a memoir of my experiences at Burning Man, which is going to be amazing. I'm so excited to share it. <laughs> Can't do this without you guys. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sarah Lynn Pablo. I'm a food, travel, and culture writer from Chicago, Illinois. And I'm also the co-founder of Filipino Kitchen, which is a food media and events group that works to uplift our community through our food and telling our stories and histories. And so what I'm working on is two book projects, which may actually become into creative nonfiction chat books. Um, so the first one is called How to Go Home, A Guide for Filipino Americans. And the second book is about um, connecting our stories in the diaspora through our food and comparing like how in different places in the world, Filipinos who have settled elsewhere like have still continued on with the tra tradition of food. So that's me, come find me at our website, which is filipino.kitchen or on Twitter, Instagram, and any of those things. Thanks, Buhai. to focus on Asian American male and, sec and issues of sexuality, which is important and significant, which led, I think, into the conversation about race and identity, which led to all of his white, men, white friends bailing on him. <laughs> so I'm currently taking a break from some of the talks and discussions because I actually have to do an interview of someone that I'm interviewing for an article that's about um, a really important case that's happening right now in Columbus, Ohio around the Black Pride 4 um, for um, trans um, or POC folks were arrested and brutalized by police while disrupting a pride parade in the name of Lando Castile. So I'm actually in this corner just um, preparing for this interview, which I have to do in about 12 minutes. Um, this is kind of the life of a writer or freelancer. You go to these events, you have to um, take some time aside to get your work done because that's really what this is all about. But um, pretty cool events so far. And I'll talk to you guys a little bit later on some of the talks that I've already been to, but gotta get this done. 
So, so far I've been to two different um, panel discussions. The first one was, the first one was about um, memoirs as vehicles for social change. And I thought that one was really amazing because I'm actually working on a memoir slash autobiography right now um, that's centered around my experiences as a queer Jamaican American activist and also charting my father's life. So really, um, I was really inspired by it because if we're talking about how documenting our lives is really important as people people of color, as queer people, as activists, um, a memoir is an amazing way to kind of disrupt the status quo and really challenge people's ways of thinking and I think that panel definitely brought that home. And then the one that I had to skip out early on to do this interview was called Translating Blackness and it was just various um, um, Afro diaspora people talking about um, basically translating texts from other African people, other people in the African diaspora, and how our understanding of blackness cannot be centered in this U.S. Um, idea of hierarchy, racism, and when we begin to translate texts through languages and ideas, we begin to expand our idea of what it means to be black, what it means to be African, and I don't know, mind-blowing so far, but I gotta dive into more stuff. All right, AWP Writers' Conference is over, and I kind of wanted to just have a sit down because I realized while filming the vlog that I didn't really take a lot of time to sort of sit down and reflect on some of the weirdness that I went through there. So you kind of saw immediately on my first day, I met some awesome POC, black, Caribbean, queer writers, and I basically hung out with them the whole time that I was there. And I think that whole month-long road trip was kind of filled with numerous things, but um, one of the main things that I experienced a lot, whether it was when I was camping in Mississippi to when I was in New Orleans, not really in New Orleans as much, but especially during the AWP Writers Conference, um, were a lot of microaggressions, like especially when you're a black dude, when you look kind of like me, I mean I know I look like a hipster, and when you kind of enter these spaces, um, you, you, you notice a few things that are like really, really weird. And I'm just immediately gonna jump in and take you through some moments that I had. I think during my second or third night at AWP, me and my friend that I went there with, um, we decided to go to a reading. So we go to this reading immediately at the door. Drunker white woman stops me and she says, excuse me, are you here for this or something else? Next microaggression is we went inside, the reading was very hipster-esque, reminded me of my days in Seattle. We go and go to the bar there because it's just this giant empty room with tables and an author signing books. So I go to the bar, wait in line, I ask this woman in front of me, oh excuse me, is this bar cash only or do they take cards? And she kind of glances back at me and I don't know, I think in the moment I didn't really notice her give me like a uh, like look. But I think she did, and this was a middle-aged white woman, glasses, blonde, 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 Becky. And she said, um, oh, I think they take card. And then she looked at me and she said, do you have enough to pay for a drink? And I said, yes. And then here's the thing. You ask someone that once, one of the few black people in the room, she doesn't know me. And then she says again, are you sure? And I'm like, yes, I'm sure I have enough money to get a drink. And then she just turned turned around and went and got her drink. And I think this was honestly a really weird way of offering to buy me a drink, but it's also like, fuck you. I don't need your money, white lady. Why are you, like, I don't know. It's just like when these moments happen, one right after the other, it's always just like, I literally can't fathom how you can say that to another person and just think that it's okay. And then on a racial level, it's even worse. So, fast forward five minutes. I'm sipping my drink that I bought, or I think my friend that I went there with bought me at the bar, and the girl from the door comes up to me. She's like noticeably tipsy, and she, sa and she comes up to me and she apologizes, and she said, oh, like, I'm so sorry, I feel like that thing at the door was really awkward. Can I give you three free drink tickets? So immediately I'm like, reparations? So I take these three free drink tickets and then I go to the bar, go to use my free drink ticket, then a woman that I met earlier in the week comes up to me and she says, oh this is Prince, we were on a panel together earlier this week. This is my first writers conference. I've been writing professionally for a year and this woman mistook me for another black writer at the conference. And so these, all of these moments are 
symbolic of sort of the status of the writing industry and academia and and media in general like these spaces are so corporatized and they're considered such industries that it's hard for people of color and black people to get into them because of a lot of structural inequality and even more than that the cultural understanding of like blackness and people of color and even just like the role that whiteness plays like i had a haitian friend who was there who went to a writing the revolution panel and a white dude there said oh well we can just write um with academic terms because everyone here is college educated right no that's an assumption that's based on your privilege that's based on your whiteness um I mean, even just moments like sometimes I'd be sitting down by myself looking at a looking at a looking at the schedule for what I was going to do next and a white person would, or sometimes it would be a black person, but someone would come up to me. But if it's a white person, they'd come up to me and say, you look cool. Here's my card. You look like you might be interested in writing for this. And granted, it's like, yeah, if you're a person that kind of stands out in certain spaces, that's fine. But I think all of these moments in combination with the overwhelming whiteness of AWP and some of these other things. And I'm not saying that I didn't enjoy this experience at all. It was amazing to be around other writers. I haven't been around a lot of writers in a long time, but um, my friend is on social media sort of pushing for acknowledgement of being harassed there um, as a Filipino woman by a worker at the Tampa um, the Tampa Convention Center. And so all of these sort of small microaggressions and issues are symbolic of larger, like messed up things about white people not really understanding the way to interact or, I mean, I, diversity to me is a really bland and meaningless word in a lot of ways, but in order for me to enter that space and feel comfortable, it would not be a mostly white space, which I think is a part of the problem. And maybe with one of the things that I'm gonna keep centered in my goals in the future for writing is to center my identity, center myself, center my experiences, my needs, and the stuff that I'm putting out, and also in the spaces that I'm learning from writing-wise. I mean, AWP was like a very weird and beautiful and cool experience because, I mean, there was the conference within the conference, which was me and my POC friends hanging out, me and my white friend that I went with who's really down and woke and like gets this stuff. And me constantly sort of looking around and thinking, wow, there are a lot of stuffy looking white writers here. And I wonder how many of them like interact with a lot of black people that aren't just like in academia. I wonder how many of them um, treat the people of color in their grad programs um, well because that was also a big topic of conversation. There was literally a panel called The Sunken Place going to get your going to grad school for writing as a person of color. So I don't know. Tell me if you went to AWP 2018, particularly if you're a person of color or anyone who noticed sort of weird vibes or been to a number of AWPs, this was my first one. Um, I mean, I will probably go to some in the future if given the opportunity, um, but I won't really like thirst for it. So um, thank you for watching and yeah, let me know how AWP was for you if you've ever gone or let me know of other writing opportunities. I learned of other writing opportunities for people of color so comment below if you want to know some of these and i'll let you know them but thank you for watching and see you later